This is Amy Chan from CakeDecoratingSchool.com, and if you like cake decorating, you're in the right place. Thanks for checking out one of our past live sessions. If you had fun and enjoyed it, we'll hope you tune in for one of our future lives. And remember, if you're one of our paid members, you can watch these and all the rest of them anytime on your platform. Get that a minute, awesome. So we're gonna do advanced uh, buttercream borders so everyone can see. Uh, and so mostly what's gonna happen here is we're gonna be combining some stuff that we've already done and we've already talked about. So your shells, your reverse shells, all that kind of jazz, you can combo those things together to make some prettier, more advanced techniques that are still relatively easy because when you break them down into the parts, you already know how to do them. So I'm gonna be using a 21, most likely a 12 and five, and then I might also pop out the 104 and the three, and we will go ahead and get started. I'll just show you some of these. So you can see like this is my little fleur-de-lis style, right? You can do it on its side, right or up and down you can combo it with some other things to give it a little more of a wrought iron look kind of give it that victorian kind of feel at the bottom of the cake but it's basically just little mini reverse shells in each direction and then a shell on top and that's where we're going to start um, but we also have some more kind of like scroll style ones that are exaggerated elongated versions of your reverse shell and then there's some cute little things like some little filigree kind of vine style stuff that you can also do that's a simpler kind of clean uh, less intrusive way to do the edges of your cakes just because some people don't like a lot of frosting or you maybe don't want to take too much attention away from whatever else is going on decoration wise on your cake so we're going to go over a bunch of these today I'm going to put this to the side and get my first little page out and we're just going to do the little fleur de lis right? and get myself organized and I have my bag with my number 21 star tip Right, so just hold that up and let it focus a little bit. Right, so it's nice and big. It'll be easy to cover some area on the bottom of the cake. And it doesn't matter, right, which you do first, whether it's the shell or the little reverse shells on the side. It's more about being consistent. So you either want that shell to be on top in the middle or underneath and just keep it consistent all the way around the cake. So I'm just going to do Let's see, fold this so it lays flat. And do, I like to do the little reverse shells first and then do the shell on top. So I'm going to start and just pipe, right, a nice star. Pull that to the center, right, so everyone can see. And then I'm going to go the opposite direction, right. So again, nice star pull that curve to the center, right? And that makes a nice little V shape in the middle where you can pop your shell in. And if it's easier, you can do these to the side. So then I'm just going to do what I would normally do, start piping, let that frosting roll over. Oop. And if my paper doesn't move, pull it down and you get a nice little fleur de lis shape, right? You can do these sideways on your cake or you can do them vertically, so it doesn't matter, right? If you do them sideways, you can start that one curve at the bottom, right? And line them up like that, so that edge <clears throat> is on the bottom of your cake, or and I'm gonna pull the little cake over and hopefully it cooperates. I tried to glue it down, right? You can do them so that it's kind of half on the board and half on the cake, right? So what I mean is you can, right, pipe that shell, like that, right? So you can get them going so it's half on the board and half on the cake. Right, it's a little, sorry, I'm at a funky angle so this didn't quite connect right, so that it actually covers up the bottom. Or, I'm gonna see if I can get this to behave and not slide off on me. Um, you can do them up, right? so that it's up off of it, right? So there's a couple of different ways you can use some of these where it can really cover the bottom edge if you've got some, I don't know, sloppiness going on down there, if you're still working on finishing off your cakes, 
or you can raise it up so that it becomes more of a detail and less of a traditional border, right? And then you can also do them, right? So that they're facing up like that. And that gives it more of a kind of fleur de lis feel, a little more kind of like the top of a wrought iron fence. And you can actually combo it with swags and make something really beautiful that looks intricate, but it's actually really, really easy. You're just taking a couple of basic techniques, combining them together for a more complicated effect. So you can really use this little quick border to create a beautiful effect. You can use it three or four different ways. Um, you can even mirror too. So you can go the up this way and down that way and kind of, you know, create a little kind of stalagmite stalactite situation going on and finish off a cake with some detail without really it being complicated and it's a nice simple finish, right? So those are our little flirt leaves. We'll move on to some little scrolls, right? And let's do this one first. And I'm just gonna refill my bag really quickly. So I have enough. So the scrolls are going to be like a reverse shell, except we're going to open up that curve and make some space. So we're just going to really make it larger than it normally would be. And I'll pipe a reverse shell first, just so you can see what I mean. But make sure I get loaded up on buttercream because I'm going to use quite a bit. So. And scrolls are a nice little way to finish the bottom of the cake too. So when we're doing a typical reverse shell, it's really nice and tight. So you start piping, you let that frosting balloon out and you curve it over, pull it down. And it's a nice tight, right? Short motion. What we're going to do is take that, start it, and then we're really going to draw and elongate it and make it a nice long tapered tail, right? So we're going to start, pull up, right? Let that twist out and make a nice, beautiful pattern. And for whatever reason, my buttercream is being really naughty today and it's trying to do that. Um, so we'll do another one just to make it cooperate, right? So nice, big, beautiful, let it lay into place. Right. And I'm going to taper off my pressure and pull a little quicker just there at the end. Right. And then when you go to do your next one, you're just going to overlap. Right. And keep going. So you cover up your little ends and you make a nice pattern all the way around the cake. And the one thing you can do here is then, right. Go in and make a smaller one as well. Right. And this gives you this kind of like cresting waves, nice little kind of scroll detail work at the bottom. Right. And you can see, you can line up all those little curved started edges at the bottom, or if you want to mix it up a little bit, when you do these, you can make that smaller, right? Accent piece. There we go. It's warming up on the other side, right? So you can always do them same side, other side, you can alternate, right? To give it a little more interest. And then you can just keep going all the way around your cake. So it doesn't have to be consistent and you can use that to your advantage to create some alternate designs. So you can go all the way around the cake doing your second little curve on the same side, or you can do every other. So go bottom and then top, bottom, top, right? And you can use that as a way to mix up and vary your designs very easily. It gives them a little bit of interest, especially if everything's kind of monotone. It just adds a little kind of flavor and spice and draws the eye in, right? Uh, Yes. So then the other thing that you can do with these is you can alternate the orientation, right? So that I'm talking about our big curve. So if we go clockwise to start with, then we can go counterclockwise on the next one, right? So that gives it just a little bit 
of a more, I'd say, kind of floral, kind of viney look, things growing out of each other. So you can use basically its reverse shells over and over again. We're just combining them in different patterns to give it a different feel and tone. Put this to the side. And what is next? Ah, so <clears throat> the zigzags are another one that's easy to combo. It's a really nice effect. Uh, and you can get some kind of floral, not really floral, but kind of like fabric-y textile feels with those. So for those, I usually use a nice star tip. So in this case, our 21. And you're using the opening of the star tip, right, to really kind of determine the width of your little zigzag, right? So you're just letting that frosting flow out in a nice, even pattern, right? And then you can use that along with a plain tip or ruffles or other stars, right? You can go down the middle and do a little shell. And this one always looks nice in pastels, so it gives you a nice, really full border, and it kind of looks like a nice kind of ruffled, ruched fabric with a little beading detail on top. So it kind of gives you a very lace kind of fabric textile feel. And the other thing that I like to do with it, which for me kind of reads like grow grain, is taking that bead border and putting it on both the top and the bottom. Right, so this ends up looking a lot like ribbon. And I like having a lot of different little borders that I can do kind of like in my back pocket, ready to pull out. Because a lot of times when we get requests for orders, people may not know what they want at all. Sometimes they just give me one word, they say pink. They don't tell me what shade even. Um, so having a bunch of different ways you can finish a cake and a bunch of different suggestions kind of ready to go can be really, really helpful. Um, and sometimes even for weddings, the only thing I might get is a color swatch. Uh, so having things that I can draw from inspiration wise that give me the look and feel of some fabrics or some textiles is always uh, great. And sometimes ends up being just what they wanted. Right? So the other thing I like to do with these, which has a bit more of a geometric feel, right, is taking it and letting the bag burp, but reversing it, right? So I go for right, three little lines one direction, three little lines the other direction. And it's actually a cute way to kind of make like a little mosaic. You can do these in different colors, go one direction, one color, other direction, the other, and make a nice little checkerboard pattern even on the bottom. So it's a great way to add a little design, a little detail, a little interest without getting too crazy or having to know how to do too many things. And it almost has a little bit of a Greek key feel to it as well. So it's just another way to take that zigzag, add a little interest, make it look more complicated just by doing it in short little segments so that it lines up and makes an even border at the bottom, but it gives you a little bit more interest and has a little bit almost of a Cornelli lace feel, but you can see it's nice and puffy. So it'll cover up the bottom edge of your cake, which is always important, especially if you're still working on smoothing your sides. Right? So then I think the other one that I know I want to cover is what I kind of call my little filigree style or vines. Um, and vines can also easily be kind of like streamers and confetti. So I like to think of like, I don't know, cafe signs, like Italian French cafes where they have that nice little filigree kind of scroll work around the lettering and lots of little dots and other stuff, but it's just a really simple way to finish the edge of a cake. So you just start with a line, touch down, and then we're just gonna make a series of little loops. And I like to do kind of like one small, one big, one small, right? And then go ahead with your line. Little dot, little dot, little dot, and then I'm gonna repeat my pattern again. 
right? And this is just, as you can see, I'm using a number five tip. It's still nice and small. It's a minimalistic way to kind of finish the side of the cake. It adds just a little detail without really being distracting, right? And a lot of times too, you can do this in like chocolate or something else if someone doesn't really like a lot of buttercream or a lot of frosting. But those loops can also be used at the edges of your cakes. So I like to think of this on like, like sheet cakes. We have a lot of vineyards in our area. So a lot of times people are like, just throw some grapes on it. And I'm like, oh, okay, how do we class up grapes, right? Just making some little scrolls. So if we imagine this is kind of the border of a square sheet cake, just taking a large round tip and letting your frosting do the work. You can make a series of loops that go different directions, and it's a great way to edge off and define the corners of the cake. Add a few leaves, a few little dots for your grapes, you're ready to go. If you do a bright color like this, some of those confetti quins, it becomes streamers, and it's a nice way to kind of frame a message on a celebration cake even though it doesn't cover up the actual borders. And it pairs well if you do something like a shell with just a plain tip, like a number 12 on the bottom, right? And then, oh, yep. Then we have kind of more combinations that we can do. So just off of the top of my head, right? These were some that I was kind of thinking of the other day. So I did a little line, right? Some tiny shells, my little curly cues, shells, lines, right? Dots, cute little way to add some interest. Almost looks like jewelry or necklace. Beautiful if you're doing something princess themed for little girls or whoever. And let's see. And you can also combine your scrolls with your fleur de lis. And then I'm also gonna do it with, I think, a ruffle, just because they look really nice. So just really quickly, things like, right? You can do your little scrolls, right? and combine it with things like your fleur-de-lis. So you can create even more complex patterns by stringing these together as well. Um, so it's kind of the sky's the limit. Once you know how to do some of the more basic ones, you can really get into it and make some really pretty kind of advanced ones. And a lot of times they're just combinations of ones you've already done before. But one that I really like doing, and it gives me some very much Victorian cake kind of uh, string work and extension work vibes, is using a little ruffle. Right, so you can either do, right, and this is with a petal tip, just a plain swag with it. Or you can ruffle your arch, right? And then go and do your little fleur de lis on top. And it gives it a nice kind of very like regal, very princess, what to me I think of as Victorian wedding cakes with lots of piping, lots of royal icing and marzipan kind of designs. Uh, and you can do like little beads and stuff on top. It just, they look really great. So those are some of my ideas on more advanced border combinations. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like more about the cake decorating materials and equipment we use, or just some inspirational videos about cake decorating itself, you can follow us on Insta or YouTube at Cake Decorating School. If you'd like to know more about yearly membership and what it entails, you can go to www.cakedecoratingschool.com for more information. And if you're interested in these products, you can check the links in the description.